Thanks for inviting me, everyone, and thanks for coming. Uh, so my talk is on what is square word. Oh, oh, must I? <laughs> I can talk pretty loud. Yes, you can. All right. My talk is on what a swear word reveals about uh, grammar and social context, but it could just as easily be called. Uh, what's the difference between a grumpy cat and a grumpy ass cat? Uh, and furthermore, why can't you say that that cat is grumpy ass? Um, so, in this talk, I want to show you that everyday language is just as rule governed and linguistically complex as the most formal and proper uh, or quotes, language you can find. And when I say um, everyday language, this includes both mainstream varieties of English, like the one I'm speaking to you in right now as well as non-mainstream varieties of English, like Appalachian English, New York City Puerto Rican English, Jamaican Creole, and various varieties of African American English. One reason why this is important is because dialects like African American English, which I'm going to be talking about in this talk, uh, tend to be stigmatized, or they're sometimes viewed as deficient or as not following rules. But from a linguistic perspective, negative attitudes towards languages and dialects um, are not about the dialects themselves, these attitudes are covert ways of judging the speakers of those dialects, either positive or negative. Um, but it's about the speakers, not about the dialects. What do I mean when um, I say that all dialects, including AAE, are rule governed? So when linguists talk about the rules of language, uh, we mean rules that are unconscious, rules that you follow and know without even being aware of them. These rules often seem pretty trivial. Um, there are rules of syntax, so rules for building phrases and sentences that make us say, that's a grumpy cat, rather than, that's a cat grumpy, where the asterisk means that the, um, the sentence violates one of these unconscious rules. Um, now, probably all varieties of English say uh, something like a grumpy cat rather than crack, cat grumpy. And it's these big picture rules that um, are shared across dialects um, that allow uh, us to talk about these as all varieties of English um, and allow us to more or less understand each other. But there can be smaller differences in rules too. So for example, in my dialect, if someone says, I have to get up early tomorrow, I can say back to them, yeah, well, so don't I. Um, and this means that I do too, like I have to get up early too. Uh, this kind of variation has been uh, called microsyntactic variation and pioneered by our own Richie Gain. Um, so from the point of view of linguistics and cognitive science, um, African American English is a fully developed and systematic language, complete with its own sound system, syntax, uh, ways of forming meaning, in short, all the unconscious rules that a linguistic system has. Um, and from a cognitive science perspective, it really can't be any other way. But this fact doesn't get into the mainstream talk about dialects and AAE enough. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to define AAE just to get us all on the same page. So African American English is considered an ethnolect, a uh, dialect spoken mainly by those with origins in the African American community. Uh, but note that not all African Americans speak AAE, and not all speakers of AAE are African American. Um, one of the ways I'm going to show you that the rules um, that um, the rules of everyday language, uh, sorry, that everyday language is rule governed is to give you some parts of an analysis um, that I've done on the swear word ass. Welcome, Alec. Um, in a particular. <laughs> 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 okay, like any other language, um, AAE has formal, informal, and slang ways of speaking. Uh, some folks think that all there is to AAE is slang. Uh, AAE has slang, but AAE is not slang. Uh, we will be talking about a swear word today, however, so we'll be solidly in the realm of language that is very informal and generally not considered appropriate for formal occasions like church, but okay for the philosophy building. <laughs> so in informal speech in AAE, the word ass, in the current construction that's, that's called discourse ass, is in um, get that ugly ass jump out of here, or you're all laughing, having a good ass time. Other varieties of English have similar and even overlapping constructions that use the word ass, including my own variety of English, uh, which I would characterize as mainstream white English. So I can say things like, get your ass over here, or that guy was being a real dumb ass, things like that. Uh, the rules of ass might be very similar between my dialect and African American English, but there are differences. So the data from this project comes not from my own intuitions, but from self-identified speakers of African American English, since that was the dialect whose uh, unconscious rules I was interested in modeling. 
And uh, I'd like to thank the speakers who gave judgments on the, uh, these data over the years. Um, okay, so over the next few uh, minutes, I want to convince you that from a syntactic perspective, uh, pink ass shirt has a structure very similar to something like pinkish shirt. Um, and that ass is a function word or morpheme, like ish or e, in that it attaches to a word or phrase to make it an adjective. So ish and e can attach to nouns like clown to form clownish, which is an adjective. Um, it can attach to, attach to adjectives like cute, so we can get another adjective, cutish. Um, and these morphemes can even attach to uh, phrases. So uh, we get things like feeling a bit rainy dayish or a bit don't bother me. Um, now in the examples here, we see ass serving a similar function. So ass can form, uh, can attach to a noun like boss. Uh, to make boss ass, so we get boss ass bitch. And it can attach to an adjective like fine to form a uh, fine ass jumper. It can even attach to phrases, as in uh, look at all them lame Inca no rap ass. Um. <laughs> um, uh, in these cases, uh, the point is though, what uh, ass attaches, uh, whatever atta ass attaches to functions like an adjective. Um, but ass can't just attach anywhere. So there are rules about where it can go. As uh, must, <laughs> as must go on the end of what it is. Um, so in AAE, uh, you can um, um, you can talk about that ugly ass junk, but you can't, or at least my consultants can't say that ass ugly junk. Um, it also can't go in the middle of a word either. So. Um, uh, you might think, oh, why would you even think that? Well, we have another swear word that exists across varieties of English um, that can go in the middle of words. Um, so uh, the word fucking, for example, I can say that I live in Philip fucking uh, But the rules of ass don't allow that, so um, I can't say I live in Philip ass Dalphia. So ass um, doesn't allow that, doesn't have that rule. Um, Another syntactic rule of discourse asks, and what it attaches to, um, is that uh, it, it has to modify a noun. Um, so what I mean by this is, um, we can say uh, that's a fine ass jumper, but we can't say that jumper is fine ass. Um, kind of interestingly, in mainstream English, we have adjectives that also have this a similar kind of property. So although we can say that's the former chief of staff, we can't say that chief of staff is former. It's kind of interesting. All right, and this gets us into semantics, so, um, or the, the meaning of the discourse ass construction. Um, one property of ass is that the word itself doesn't seem to add a negative or a positive evaluation on its own, even though it's um, a swear word. So in other words, um, what I mean is that um, whether the whole phrase is positive or negative, in its evaluation of something depends on the positive or negative evaluation of the word that it attaches to. For example, in, uh, in the first sentence, you ain't got some dope ass shoes, dope is a positive, uh, is a positive uh, term, um, and so dope ass is then positive. Similarly with good ass, and then you know, with ugly, ugly has a negative evaluation, so ugly ass junk is, um, is something negative. Uh, there's one other way that I'm going to talk about uh, about how discourse as um, seems to lack ordinary meaning and has property of what in semantics we call expressives. So an expressive has the property of not changing what we call the truth conditions of a sentence. Um, uh, so to illustrate this, uh, consider sentences like, I took out the trash last night, um, versus I took out the damn trash last night. Both of these sentences are true um, in the same in, in the same situations. I mean, yeah, like you know, I might have a different attitude in the second sentence, but what matters is of the truth or falsity of the sentence is whether I took out the trash. Um, this is also very similar. Um, is the same case with um, with as. So um, sentences three and four uh, don't differ in their truth conditions. And in fact, and this is kind of surprising to people uh, sometimes, a pink ass shirt does not have to be any more pink than a pink shirt. <laughs> or a grumpy ass cat doesn't have to be any more grumpy than a grumpy cat. Uh, this fact is sometimes surprising to speakers of mainstream varieties of English. And in the past, um, audience members who are not speakers of AAE uh, do not even believe that this is what my consultants report. But microsyntactic and microsemantic variation is real. 
So to sum up, I hope I persuaded you of a few things. Uh, first, whoops, let's not go too fast. Um, everyday language is uh, systematic and uh, rule governed just as we would expect from the perspective of linguistics and cognitive science. Next, judgments about dialects uh, are not about anything linguistic. They're a covert way of judging the speakers of those dialects. Um, and this is because from a linguistic perspective, dialects like AAE are as systematic and rule governed as any other variety. Um, and finally, um, uh, uh, let's see, a non-native speaker of a given dialect can really only go so far in analyzing these subtle differences. So I'd like to end with a call to speakers um, of all dialects to, first of all, take pride in how you speak. Um, and second of all, uh, take more linguistics co courses so that you yourself <laughs> um, can do this very important work. Thank you.